So cut to the day when I get arrested. The cops had traced the package of money that was coming from the East Coast, which a drug sniffing dog had alerted them to at the FedEx sorting facility. So I'm in handcuffs and they're doing their due diligence. They're searching for clues. They find about 100,000 at the residence, the apartment that I was staying at. I always kept some getaway money right next to my bed in a safe. I just liked having cash next to my bed. It helped me sleep good. So they found all that money and they knew they were onto something and they found uh, codes and addresses to banks where I kept money in safe deposit boxes. Uh, they also went over to my parents' house uh, where they were able to seize not all of the money, but a good chunk of the money. So at the end of the day, they were able to locate over a half a million dollars in cash simply because I was getting sloppy with it because I had so much money that I was not properly laundering. So ultimately I was indicted and forced to plead guilty to actually not a drug charge, but it was money laundering. That was the crime, money laundering and conspiracy. And I ended up getting sentenced to prison. So of course, while I was in prison, as every criminal will tell you, they spin their wheels day after day after day thinking about what they could have done differently. You also spend a lot of time around career criminals. And that's where I got a master's degree in how to launder money. And that's really why I'm the most qualified to talk about laundering money. People are always like, well, John, you lost all your money. How could you be in the position to tell other people how to do it? That's precisely why, because I failed. You learn the most from failure and you learn the most from being around failures and everybody in prison is a failure. That's why they're in there. That's what prison is. It's oops, got caught. So if I could do it over again, this is what I would do. Not only would I utilize the cash gifts, which I talked about previously, I would get involved in cash businesses right away. So I would open a pizza shop, a shoe store, a clothing business, a bar, and I would give my friends and people that I knew money, drug money. I would give a bunch of my buddies 10,000 in cash and I would say, come spend it at my joint, come spend it at my store, right? I would then keep the receipts from the purchases they made at my business. Boom, now I'm paying taxes to the IRS, now I'm in the system, now I'm legal, right? So I would use these cash businesses as the first step in taking dirty money off the street and starting to clean it up. So now what I wanna do is keep pushing the money further and further away from its origin point, which of course was illegal. So I would take that money from the cash business that I run and I would then use it to purchase a piece of real estate. Say I wanted to make a down payment on an apartment building and I had 50 grand that I had received and declared to the IRS and I would put a down payment on a fourplex. Now I've created another layer of legitimacy around me. You sell the real estate and now you have more legitimate income to declare. And maybe you take this money and you purchase a home out of the country and you just keep building layers of protection around yourself. So again, the government, the IRS, the FBI, at the end of the day, these are just organizations comprised of human beings. The harder you make it and the more layers you put between yourself and the dirty money, the better off you're gonna be and the better chance you have of avoiding detection. And these agencies obviously operate on budgets and they need to produce results. So unless you are a very high profile dealer with a target on your back, you have a good shot of slipping in under the radar if you can bring in money off the street and little by little, incrementally, start creating layers around it. So you look more legitimate and you're building equity. Hey guys, if you liked that video, be sure to check out the full length episode right here. All right, we'll see you later.